Hello out there. You're listening to the Band of Runners podcast with myself, Rob Cowlin, and my good friend, Simon Staples. Good evening, Rob. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Oh. In here, I've got company. Dog. Little doggies behind me. <laughs> he wants some attention. <laughs> Robbie's been out running and he's not looking after Zico anymore. Oh, that dog. Uh, do you want to put any more posts up on Facebook? That dog. Oh, I can't put enough up, mate. Everyone loves him except you. <laughs> oh, what have you been? Up, right. What you been up to? So it's been a while. Um, it hasn't it been has a while, been has it? A while. It hasn't. It hasn't. <laughs> it's at least I don't know half a day since I spoke to you. Last. I, think, I think it's been a month since we've done this. Oh yeah, definitely been a while. Been too long, maybe since we did this one. But well, um, have you ever yeah. been busy? You been busy then? Busy, <laughs> sort of, yeah. I mean, I, I'm employed during this part of the pandemic, so yep. it's slightly different. Yeah. Um, and obviously we've had Christmas and all that stuff, and uh, just not not busy in any meaningful way. Just kind of filling up the days with stuff. How about you? Um, same old mate, same old. Um, I've been doing <laughs> actually. I mean, I know you know, but I've been doing every weekend. I'm trying to go out for I don't know five hours ish i don't care for the distance i'm just going out time on feet that's in one go yeah yeah time on feet five hours mm. no agenda just see what happens so and i think I've, I've just keep like distance fitness yeah isn't it? i think i've done i think i've done i think maybe five weeks now five weeks on the go oh blimey yeah. look at that training training you do take your training very seriously. Training, you know, right? training for what? Oh, that's one thing. So you, and I, I've, this is amazing. I think we should go into detail with this. So you have put yourself up forward to do a LERF, which is a, it's a UK athletics accredited course in running, isn't yep. it? And it's, yeah. it's a, it's a leader in running fitness. That's me. What are you doing? Maybe. So, so I've signed up to this because ultimately this is a long, longish term goal, but I thought, why not do it if we can do it like uh, virtually? I, I'm pretty empty for other stuff to do. And I've always thought the end goal is what would be nice is, you know, people always talk about jobs they enjoy. I, my job kind of pays the bills and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's um, it is what it is. It has been for years and years. But I think one day an exit strategy would be to do something I an exit enjoy. strategy <laughs> no, from 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 like boring um city sort of jobs to or functional job I should say to to something I, I don't know not as a money making thing but as something to do um that that means something right. T- tell me like, your understanding of what a leader in running fitness is so leader in running fitness is um someone who can or is qualified to Lead, do everything you need to to lead basically a group of runners like a, and effectively like some you know, some sort of boot camp of runners from the local area probably um, or a small running type club it doesn't have to be affiliated it could be unofficial and take them round and teach them basically how to run whether or not they are couch to 5k type level or say aspiring marathon runners and I think that even though right now I don't even myself know how to train or do things like first aid I could definitely just add on those few skills, get the certificate. And I think the spirit of what I have always done for myself, I would love to to give that to other people. And that's what the goal is. And then longer term, maybe to become a coach in a low key kind of way to become a coach for somebody, including myself, to step up, you know, to longer distances, probably realistically ultras. Right. Okay. Am I wrong? Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, wrong? it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So my understanding of leader in running fitness, having gained this qualification, <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, is that, yeah, you, you're able to be a, um, a run leader and you have public liability insurance or whatever. You can lead a group run. You're not teaching people how to run, Robbie, I'm afraid. You are... And you've got you've it basically tells you not to be self centered. So you know we know your ultra rubby or whatever your your handle is. Yeah. Um, but you're not you're not you're not in it for you. You're in it for your for your for your fellow runners who you've got together as a group. 
And it teaches you, yeah, how to do some fun sort of, I don't know, entry level games and stuff, and how to right. how to basically make a social social thing out of it. And I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pause there. So so you have this, you are this, yeah, and it involves what fun games, not being self centered. Yeah, what have you done with Simon <laughs> Staples? <laughs> Well, back in back in the old days, before the before the pandemic times, I would I would do this every Thursday evening um, at the local pub. So you, you could take you know, you'd have groups up to I don't know, probably had groups up to about twenty people really, and you just sort of you know run, have a chat, discuss runs and I stuff. Have a proper harem. Wow. So, yeah. yeah well, surely you were just wearing your hundred marathon top and just all your two two million marathon shirt and running around, and people were just like fawn over you and ask you questions because you like you're a little celebrities so they get you to sign pictures at the end as well no i've never done that <laughs> but um no, no we'd have like you, you do a warm-up right so you do warm-ups so you learn about warm-ups oh, um no. yeah okay. yeah um and yeah. then and, and, and attendance and all that sort of stuff how, how you know keeping it real do the warm-ups go then do your main activity and then the cool down mate it is the textbook is text, but that, but it's not, it's not the lurf you're you're aspiring to, is it? Because you want to go one more than that. You have to do the lurf. It's a pathway to become. You're then yeah. going to do the coaching. In yeah, but I, and I and I think when I say what I want to do, it's not that I want to teach people to run. Frankly, I just don't know how to. But I think that um, if it doesn't sound too arrogant i think given what i've done like from absolute nothing like literally being a potato Mm -hmm. i could maybe show people that there are these things out there and be kind of a a conduit for people to go i don't know if they've not only but if they've done park run and they didn't know other things are out there i might be able to get them encourage them into doing the the local half marathon or something bit bit of robbie's robbie's coaching yeah just um yeah not like yeah i can't i can't wait i can't wait to get to this stage because you need a um you need a student for the for the coach course you also need a mentor rob hello wink wink (laughs) (laughs) a mentor yeah you need a qualified coach mate to 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 mentor you to be your sensei (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's that's too much. I'll find somebody hey, Rob, else. Rob, you know anyone? Do you know anyone? Um, I'll I'll think about it. I, I'm sure I know plenty of senseis yeah. who are qualified. There you go. Just it's all right. You can be on the long list. We'll Do- see doors how always open, yeah. mate. Doors always open. Well, it is because I'm going to be living with you again when I'm allowed to. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> and oh, I can't wait. So, is there going to be a competition for who you're coaching or training or? Um... Is it just going to be one lucky winner is going to get that golden ticket, or how would you go about doing that? Well, well, we'll do the usual side. We'll raffle it off, and raffle I'll, it off. I'll get I'll get round to actually telling somebody who who inverted commas won. Um, no, I'll just um, I, I'll find someone I'm witting, whether it's on like one of the running uh, local running groups or or from the this as we call circuit. And, and and do that, and then just uh, be um, hopefully someone is willing to uh, to listen. I don't think they would be now because it's quite obvious I don't know squat about running. Well, don't worry, I mate. Just happen yeah, to do it, it. It's it is it's uh, it's I don't know. I think it's like six months, of course. But you were telling me the other day that it's different now because obviously I attended this pre-pandemic yeah. time, so <laughs> you know I, I we had to run round sports halls and all sorts of things. <laughs> and but what what have you got to do? So I haven't looked at it properly. Like there's there's various little courses and things you've got to do beforehand. But ultimately, um, you need to sort of um, get a video of yourself doing some of the running, like warm up things to demonstrate, you know, how to do. Oh, them. please send me those. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be uploading them to the group, buddy. They'll be TikToks. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, and then you attend the class for two hours virtually, I think. Um, so it's online. And then perhaps by the time I come around to do the coaching one, I'll be playing in the sports hall too, because that sounds very fun. Well, yeah, Just I mean, your... we've we've recently had the uh, the road map, haven't yes. we? The, the map of the road. 
Yeah, but I don't have to do a bleep test, though. That's really important that I don't have to do a bleep test. No, you don't, no, you don't have to do a bleep test. What the, what do you Good. need to do a bleep test for? To show that I'm fit. That's what they. That's how they bullied me at school. They made me do the bleep test. And I <laughs> the first one out. <laughs> mum forgot. Mum, you forgot my note for PE. I'm not talking to you for a week. <laughs> I used to have a note. I used to have a note for PE as well. Well, Simon's got a Veruca, he can't go in the pool. No, 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 it wasn't a Veruca. I, did, I had an ingrown toenail back in the day when I was 15, I think, or something like 14 or 15. And um, No, seriously. So, Mother, Mother Dearest wrote the note out, and I clung to that for dear life, and I just kept showing it session after session, to the point where they were like, yeah, Staples, we don't even need to ask you for a note we know we know you've got an ingrown toenail and i was allowed to wear trainers for like months on end <laughs> cut a bit out of the uh out of the toe bit because obviously release the pressure of the ingrown toenail oh don't yeah seriously seriously yeah, but so, so, so actually you had a legit reason yeah legit reason mate you... that's the worst surgery i've ever had in my whole life i was traumatized by it Literally, you haven't had a very difficult life. Let's be honest. Oh, come off it! Look, listen, I went into the went into hospital, right? And that very same yeah. day, they're like, "Yeah, we can rip this off if you want." Like in the next twenty minutes, it's like you're shitting you me. Went, you went to hospital. My toenail fell off after Samphire Ho. Well, I didn't go to hospital. Your toenail wasn't in growing. This was in growing. I had like infection. I didn't have one. You're lucky to have a toenail. Well, it got taken off the same as yours did at Samphire Ho. But then they put the bandage on and they put the gauze the wrong way around or something. So it got infected. Then they had to yank it <laughs> off like two weeks. Oh, so, for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. So then they had to, so that was when they, they literally just tore it off. And then the second yeah. time it came back, started growing again. So then they burnt it off. So I was put under Rob. I was put under on Oh, them. my God. Yeah. That's, so I take it back. You've had a slightly difficult life. Yeah, yeah. But I've got to ask. Like, is this why you now run so much? Are you overcompensating for all those ingrown toenail days? There's only one. There's only <laughs> one toenail. Allowed... What sort of crap no, is that? Like, those, those, those halcyon days when you weren't allowed to do PE, you now, like, overcompensating for it by running marathons all the time. I don't think so. I just think no. at school I, I just really didn't want to do PE. Full stop. Really? But, yeah, but I think that's I think, I think a lot of the, the running nuts who, you know, when... when when people get older and that, and they they start taking up running, a lot of them are the people that didn't want to do PE when they were at school. Oh yeah, because people just just took, take the piss out of me because it took me like I think about it, I can still remember the time it took me. We had the, every year it was the dread of any fat kid to do the fifteen hundred meters because it was like actually an absurdly long way, like really silly. Like you had to do three. I remember three and three quarter times round the grass running track. Yeah, and I remember just. The fear of God when I didn't have my my anti PE note, which I saved for swimming. That was <laughs> saved it for that swimming. Was, saved it for that, swimming. That, no, because that was the no, swimming season. Because that was obviously like peak peak embarrassment for the fat kid. So I hated I hated swimming. It was oh. unbearable. And, um, so what, did the school did the school have a pool or did you have to go somewhere or what? What because I'm poor, so I went to a school that we had to go somewhere, like the local lake or the pond. Right, no. the pond. <laughs> a state comprehensive. What's that? Um, no, we we had a pool, Simon. It was just quite a rubbish pool. You Too had a pool boring. at your school. Yeah, well, there's a posh. thousand people at my school. Uh, my primary school had an outdoor pool. Wow, that's, it was that's full. Posh, isn't it? it was full of gunk. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was just like sit I was I was probably the one that all the PE teachers joked about in the staff room after <laughs> lessons. I remember I because I was scared of everything and I was scared of jumping in the pool. And at the end of every swimming lesson in primary school, the swimming teacher used to try and get us to jump in, and I was stood on the edge. And you're like, how is that a lesson? <laughs> jump in a swimming pool. No, no, at the end of the lesson, it was, like, meant to be a fun thing because everyone, uh, like, all the, kids, all the cool kids love jumping in. But, no, Robbie's scared because he thinks he'll bang his chin on the sides. I used to have nightmares about that. <laughs> We're going way off topic. And I was so scared I wouldn't jump in. But one time I went to turn around to get out, like, to step down off the edge of the outdoor pool. And she didn't swing it, but she pushed me with, like, the net that you fish rubbish out of the pool with. She pushed me with, the like, the bayonet of it and just jousted me into the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> and I just barely flopped sideways in. I could have broken my head on the side. 
<laughs> <laughs> uh, how did we get so distracted? I think we were talking about the lockdown oh, map or something. The the, the map. Yeah, to... just the uh, bleep tests, man, and stuff like that. But as long as that to do a bleep test, then this should be fine. But the um, so I guess I know. Sort of, I don't really know why you did do it. Actually, did you want to become a running coach? Um. Yeah, back it when when I when I applied to do it, obviously, yeah, you know, it's all self funded and whatnot, and it was literally, oh, when was it? But why? I think, like, it, was, I think it was after we did like ten and tens, hundreds and stuff. I was like, yeah, I've, I've I've completed running, and it was it was part of my, <laughs> it was part of my wave to give back, give back to the sport. Give which, back which, to the community. Yeah, that's right. He, he has tried. Is is what <laughs> is what I was trying to do. So it was it was run coaching. It was this. It was the podcast. It was the, um, oh, what is it, the blog thing. Just, uh, you know, any ways I could give back how I, I don't know. We're all, we're all very grateful, Sensei. Thanks for looking after me. Oh, so you want that? You want you want me to be your... Uh... No, I will see, but I just, I, I don't know. It, it's, it sounds harsh, but I just, I'm not questioning that you're a giving person. I just don't see your, like, your mo, your modus operandi as, as being altruistic giver backer. No, I'd like I that. Don't, I would, I would, I would actually like to be your, your sensei, Rob. I think that, I think that would work well, well for you. As I say to my boss quite often at work, we'll take it offline. Um, oh, he sounds important. Have, yeah. He sounds important, doesn't he? Oh, take it well, sh- sh- she. Sexism, please. No, no, so sorry, when, I'm uh, saying you. You saying you don't say you're right. employed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that does sound important, doesn't it? Yeah, I am employed. Um, yeah, for sure. Like, because uh, no one else is going to want to do it. So do you, yeah, okay. why not? Okay, I'll stop being a little bit. So, so you can do it. So we've been given roadmap now. Like we used to do running events. I'm sure we did. Mm, um, yeah. So is it we? So what? What's the uh, date when like stuff actually really does start kicking off? Is it? It's in May sometime. I think. Yeah, I've, I've got to admit, I'm not really on the details of it. I do know that... I think it's like of... 17th or 12th of May or something. That's when we're in stage three. And that's when you yeah, can... Yeah. When can you go to the pub? That's in April. No, it isn't. You sure? I think pub... I think outdoor pub might be May as well, maybe June. I don't nah, bullshit, like... bullshit. Everything, everything's April. Like, you can get your hair cut and the non-essential shops open and stuff. <laughs> it's not the same. The shops and the pubs are not the same, buddy. Yeah, but, but pubs but... outside... Yeah, but I think you can get, like, 30 outside at some stage. This is how much... Inter- oh, possibly. Oh. But, but no, no, but stay on topic. So, like, right, the way I have to look at it, because I'm someone who has to either sofa surf or have a hotel... And given the situation we're in, have to have a hotel. For whatever reason, this time around, hotels and stuff are quite late. Travel yeah. is earlier. Which is well, no, no, no. You, you, can, you, can, you can hotel, but it's just like you have to isolate in the hotel, for example. So if we went to do, for example... How does that work? Well, if we went to do like the Dragon 100, which is yeah. on May, May the 1st, okay? Uh-huh. Technically, I believe you can do that. We could go there, but the problem would be there'd be no indoor eats or anything like that so we'd still have to go to that supermarket and wave it i just get a meal deal rooms. like i always do yeah well, this is starting Order to feel less, less appealing to me and obviously it's okay. a it's a it's a point to point a to b so how how are you going to get to point a and finish at point b and then how are you going to get back from anywhere so there's so much stuff still to consider i think it's only really until that may time when you can really go yep fine let's go for it that's what i'm saying side because i don't have a car i have to go on trains i have to think about that i also need somewhere to stay which is like a premier inn or a travel lodge or something so for me a bit needy like, aren't you think open in oh yeah i am Thing, things are open for me probably around may time like end of april if we're lucky so for now i just have to um to plod on and i have been plodding to be fair to me i have actually been running it's not training well i know you wanted me to I say don't... this but um hello weight loss what have you done now since Where's january the rest of me? Yeah. where's he gone uh, i've just been doing it just i've been running i've been making sure i cover 10k a day so um yeah minimum like jogging or, or power walking running did a little quick one the other day didn't i and uh, for me did you and um and it wasn't I've anything been, to do with what i did was it <laughs> uh, nothing to do with it. You just think it is because you're because you're self-centered, which means you can't be a. I can't leader be a run leader. No, <laughs> not no, thinking like that. Too, too selfish. But sign a photo for me because I want one. Um, 
And no, I have, I've not had alcohol and therefore I've not eaten junk food at all so, like this year, basically. Have you had a takeaway? Like, have you had a takeaway one Indian, one Indian takeaway on my mum's birthday. Is that it? And I only had half of it. I had half of it the next day. Good wow. boy. Good boy. I'm yeah, so I, jealous. I, I, I can't eat it. I'm so You're jealous. jealous. Yeah, I am jealous. Simon's jealous. Of me. Everyone listen, Simon's jealous. Because, of well, like, I'm an all or nothing type person. I can't get balance. Oh, am I? This isn't Simon. This isn't balance. I've become a monk. Well, yeah. Saying I guess you that, have, I do yeah. have a cigarette after every run, but have I'm a, a monk. Cigarette otherwise. after every run. <laughs> it's my treat. It's the biggest treat ever. Why can't it's it be not, like? Not great, a, is it? Why can't it be a chocolate bar? No chocolate, because I have to have like the whole chocolate bar. I almost, I almost bought a galaxy when I was in the shop earlier, like a medium sized yeah, bar. Yeah, like of, like, like a fifty p, like a fifty p, or something you get with the meal deal. Mm. You know, sandwich. Drink. It's, it's gone. It's, no. It's, or are you no. talking about these ones that like a quid, and there must be like eighteen squares yeah. on it? No. Yeah, 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 yeah that's the, yeah, and, yeah, that's too and much. And they're automatically four hundred calories, and I'll eat it in literally about a minute. Yeah, twenty seconds. So it's like, what's the point? I'd rather have a sandwich. Um, I mean, what, what, what did you have for dinner this <laughs> evening, Rob? What did you have for dinner this evening? Dinner, I had a baked potato and an enormous pile of salad, which is basically almost every meal I eat. What did you have for lunch today? Um, some bread rolls and a salad. It's some sort of beige with a massive pile of salad for every meal and some meat. Are you, follow- are you following a diet thing here or is it just... No, I can't go over 2,500 calories a day mm-hmm. and I have to run 10k minimum every day. Have that's to. it. Have to. That's it. Yeah, that's the illness. Oh. So and and like the um the, the scores on the doors are as of this morning um I've lost nineteen kilograms since people New Year's owe Day. You, people owe you money for this, don't they? Yeah, so I'm doing it for Fauna's charity because obviously races were off and stuff. One person, it's Gareth Allen, our mate, started yeah. it. He said, right, if you're going to lose weight, because I said I wanted to lose fifty pounds over the whole of this year, which is about twenty one, twenty two kilos. And he said he'd give me a pound for every pound that I lost by Good Friday, which is 2nd of April. Mm. And so now I'm committed now to keep this little lifestyle going till then, which ties in nicely, actually, with a bit of back to normal, nicer weather, maybe going to a pub for a drink with some mates after a little marathon or something. So, yeah, I'm doing it for Fauna's charity. So how many raise... how many pounds does Gareth owe you right now today? So, so it's forty two pounds, which is three stone in old money, because I know you love your little Brexit three and your stone. older old fashioned units. Three stones, wow. yeah, exactly. Forty two pounds, which is forty two quid, Gareth, please. When yeah. you're ready. Well I'm in we'll a, I'm in a, a, I'm in a challenge with Gareth at the moment. So we we yeah. tri- I don't know if we're trialling this thing or not, but it's an app. It's an app where you pick a teammate, didn't pick you. Um I was about to mention yeah. I'm still absolutely raging I know about it. You're raging about it. So basically it's it's a in fact he'll beat you one No, am. no, no. It's a double <laughs> it's a doubles thing, right? And basically even more reason to pick me, but go on. It, it's the it's the it's the amount it's the most kilometers over a, a a a period of time, right? Yeah. So I think it started last week. So I was like, Gareth, I've got a mate who wants me to, to go on this app or whatever and, and do this thing. And um, guess how? Guess because I've because I've picked wisely. I picked Gareth. So Gareth does Gareth does about twenty miles a day at yeah, four thirty like in the morning. Yeah, that's like playing the game with all the cheat codes. Yeah, exactly. Like, it is. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. It's, it's, well, now hang on. Literally cheating. I'm pulling my weight. I'm pulling my weight because on this there are hang on. There's twenty. There's twenty seven teams. Okay, and there's twenty seven teams, and I'm not even one of them. No, you're not. And. So that means double that is how many players you got, okay? Because we're all in teams. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're kidding. 50, 50, 54. You're kidding. No, I've just opened it up. Right. So Gareth is obviously flying. He's doubled. He's doubled. Anyone. He's doubled. He's So he's at 372 kilometers. And yeah. this has been going a week and a half. <laughs> <laughs> right. Seat codes. And yeah. I, I, I was well, I was really up there. But now I'm third. I can't believe this. And I'm third by 21 kilometres. That's a half marathon tomorrow, then, isn't it? Well, it's not great, is it? I was asked to do this app to, like... This is the reason you haven't invited me, because I would I would absolutely bump you down that table. 
Oh, my God. But anyway... You'd be in the dirt, mate. My team, me and Gareth, we're first by over 250 kilometres. Yeah. But I'm third in the solo. If you look at this solo, I'm third. Yeah, well, that's that's fine. You're, you're quick, aren't you? You're not, you're not an endurance man. You're a quick man. Well, I should be focusing on this app and being, you know, up there with Gareth, <laughs> shouldn't I? Yeah, but there's no way that anyone can match anyway, him because he's third. But, but yeah, so, you, the, so, the, so, so what you're going to do is let me and Paul Commons come and take yeah. you on. Well, the, the app's called Go Joe, G O G O E, and actually, I've never heard of it. I quite like it. It's pretty good. It's pretty okay. Good. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe maybe share it with the rest of the class. Share it with the rest of the class. Is, go, that, is, go is, Joe. is anyone listening allowed to join? Am I allowed to join? I, you can join this challenge, yeah, straight away. But obviously, it's already uh-huh. started, so real massive disadvantage. But there's loads of challenges on here. I think we might get the chap on, and ex- he can explain it all. Well, that's fine. We can come on, but I want. I'm getting the rest of my, my miles backdated, please. Yeah. Did, but I told you about it. I couldn't. He mentioned somebody that I didn't know. Brownlee, wasn't it? Uh, oh yeah, it's the it's, twins. Um, They're twins. Uh, Alistair and um, Thingy Brownlee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The triathlon, the I think they've got something twins. to do with it. They've got something to do with it. All but, right. Um, okay. You're yeah. well researched, Sai, for this app you're you're promoting now randomly. <laughs> yeah. I want to promote something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got, but I've got one for you. Okay, so they don't. They, it doesn't use Strava. It uses a wearable such as a Garmin or a Fitbit or whatever. Yeah, but it doesn't do Sunto. That's a problem. Okay. Well, let's let's park that because I've got another one on Strava now. And it's a topic. It's a topic. With Strava, right? Yeah. Do you, do you ever pause your watch on a run? Very, very often. Every time very, I need a Very, very often? Why? Every time, every time I need a wee or some other type of toilet or I have to... Um, go like uh, into a shop or something to get a drink. Right. Can, yeah, you, can you justify why not. you're doing that? Why are you stopping your watch? Because I'm not in a race, so I'm not recording the time. I'm recording the time of me moving to get an average of my movement kind of pace just to see how I trend over time if I actually cared about it. So it's not reflective to leave the watch running if I stop for a chat, for example, with someone stop like my uncle. Like, chat. I... like my uncle cycled past me earlier when I was out jogging. We, um, I stopped to walk and chat with him for 10 minutes, um, basically fully stopped moving. What is the point in having a kilometre that took 20 minutes and then the rest of them being like seven or eight? What, what, what's, what's meaningful about that recording? It's, Stupid, isn't it? No, it's, it's real time. It's real time. This is what really, this, this bugs me, I think. No, but Strava catches both, so who cares? Guess so. I know. Ne- I'd never record it. So there was a guy, I've forgotten his name. There was a guy who did a 5K and he was trying to break like some club record for yeah. his local club. And he recorded like 500 metres, then he paused it. Then he bombed it again for another 500 metres. Yeah, that's it. what I mean. Why is he, he doing got... that? Why? No, that's no, cheating. But, he, but, the, but that, is, that is kind of the, the reason that you shouldn't do it if you're competing or doing something like that. All yeah. I'm doing is plodding about. What, so I need something to, to 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 be meaningful on the watch, and that isn't me popping into Audi to do my shopping before I run home. Interesting fact: I probably run just as quickly with two massive bags of shopping in each hand as I do without, <laughs> because, because that's all the way I've lost. My body's just used to carrying it now. But um, yeah. So, but point to make: on the other day, I did a ten k lunchtime a couple of days ago. Mm. Uh, it was that lovely sunny day. Oh, was this the one when I went out and did a five k? dash or whatever oh it might have been like you'd done it earlier in the day but you only yeah. did five so um but well, no so no obviously I, obviously, I did, I obviously i had to do another five to get back to the car okay because you've got a car because you're privileged but um so i went out and did like a 10k loop but all i'd set out and i was going to do like 5k quite hard and i was just going to trot home like jog walk and the first 5k i felt so sick i had to pause the watch literally twice because i thought i was going to chuck up the potato i'd just eaten like half an hour before how many potatoes you eat in a day <laughs> i couple if you count them and um but i was like all right I've, I've really screwed this up guys or me i am um, i i'm just gonna have to uh junk this or walk back but then I, on like the fifth or sixth kilometer, i just started feeling good i just got out of all the farmer fields and off all the dirt and i was running home and i realized i was gonna be late for a work meeting so <laughs> Or rather, I wasn't going to have time for a cigarette before my work meeting and after my run. So I pegged it as hard as I could, increasingly fast to every kilometre, because I realised the first one was just under 30 minute 5k pace. And that's one of my literal like resolutions for the year was to do that. And I thought, hang on, I don't feel sick anymore. I'm just going to go for this. I need to get back from my ciggy. So run, run like the wind, Robbie. And I just pegged it. 
and I was like jumping up on verges. I was like going around the outside. Jumping the up on list. verges. I was skipping over roads. I was like flicking my headphones on. It was weird. It's like entered this weird slipstream of just not caring how much my legs hurt or anything. And I got back to my house dead on five, uh, five more K and I'd done it in 28 and a half minutes. I couldn't believe it. It was like the last mile was like eight minutes. And I just like, I haven't done that in four or five years, that, that pace of run. Mm. And it was just, uh, so, but that wasn't paused in that second half. So to me, that's when you're recording something and you want to like register a time for yourself or for competition, you don't pause. But otherwise, who cares, man? I mean, what are you going to tell me? Like counter argument, you never ever pause your watch. Why? No, I, I don't. I don't. Um, maybe, maybe because that's that's my meant. That's that's how I've just been brought up to do this bloody thing. You know, you just got to run until you die. And if you do die, live with the shame. Of, you uh, up to do that? No, <laughs> but just I've never because I ne- I never wore a watch. Okay, I never wore a watch until marathon seventy something. Right? What? Yeah, seriously. There there was no recording, no nothing. I didn't know what paces or anything until about marathon Sorry, number seventy. Mate. That's really backwards. I know. Well, it is in this day and age now. But I, yeah. I was running to feel. You talked to someone like a Lovelock. He he he's got a fucking, he's got a Casio watch, and that's about it. And he you can sense you know you get to know that you're running a sub four type thing. Bloody hell! I, I, I like the idea as like doing it as a one off, and I do know some very accomplished runners, including yourself, who maybe haven't done it. But bloody hell, I need it to moderate my heart rate and everything. I need to know where I'm at. Yeah, but I I could t- seriously those those I say those first few marathons, those first seventy marathons. You would know. You could tell that you're on for a sub four. You would just know. For example, oh, this is sub four. Oh, this is about a free. Th- I think that's. I think it's. Uh, you know, I think it's a good skill to have. I think ditch your watches. Yeah. Ditch the watches and run to feel and get to know paces and stuff. I remember doing runs like with my mate Ben Steele, who's been on this, and he yeah. would, he, he would test me. We'd be like six miles in. How fast are we go? And I could tell him. Seriously. I could tell him, and he'd be like, wow, you're only like five, ten seconds off the minute mileage. I, I tell you what, I totally get what you're saying, because at a time when I was between watches, like my old Garmin had gone broken, and I was what I was doing was, because I listened to music on the phone anyway, I just stick Strava on my phone on as the app, and it records, and it doesn't tell me what's happening, but I know, yeah. based on how I feel, how fast I was going. So I do that sometimes. I, like, oh. I do that sometimes. I'll, yeah. I'll run the watch, but I... I do not allow myself to look at it. I'll just have the watch face on there. And and yeah. the, the game is guessing. Oh, it's a bit exciting. How far has he run? I did that in one of my one of my five-hour blocks. How far do you reckon he gone? It's good in a way because actually there there is a bit of torture looking at the watch. And, you know, it is nice to have company running. But what I've noticed is what I'm doing, what we call buddy runs, like, you know, whether it's Mrs. H or Justin, who are local to me, going out once a week each. What I don't do when I'm chatting to them and jogging or, is I, I don't really look at the watch. I might check it a couple of times in an hour, yeah. but I don't really look at it. And I, we seem to tick along at actually probably a slightly more healthy pace. Considering I'm talking, I tend to do some of my quicker miles with those guys. But that's, they not, are yeah, that's another thing is that like, I've, I've, I don't know if it's myth or what or whatnot, but I've been told that if you, for your marathon pace, you should be able to hold a conversation throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're wheezing or whatever, you can't, yeah. you can't hold that conversation. Yeah. You're going too quickly for a marathon pace. And you should be and able... I don't know if one of us told the other one that, but somebody otherwise did actually say to me, if you can't exchange, you know, sentences yeah. without being breathless, you're running too far. I mean, it's complete bullshit because if I do a sub three, I'm wheezing <laughs> and wanting to kill anyone who tries to talk to me. If 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 you're if you're expecting more than a one word answer, you're not going to get Yeah, it. I can remember. No, I couldn't like I could usually at least get a little thumbs up or something from you. That day when you did the first one, yeah. that you, you you genuinely looked business like. I mean, I was being sick into bins on and off, but <laughs> <laughs> you 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 looked deadly serious. I know you'd had probably about as much drink as me the night before. So I just thought, oh, he doesn't feel very well either. He's just putting a brave face on. But yeah, you looked it was game face, is what I described that as. And you're right, and maybe, you know, I'll pocket the watch or do it on my thing a bit more often because I did used to have a really good sense because I have got quite good, I don't know, spatial and number awareness and stuff, and I used to like playing with the maths, but I think I'll struggle to ditch the watch entirely. Oh, I just if, no, do it. The, the, watch, the watch has overtaken the actual love for the game now. It's all about the watch now. 
everyone's on yeah, the watch. Yeah, it's not on Strava, it didn't happen. Yeah, that, that but um, I, I hear what you're saying. It's, but it's like the, but the recording and the pausing and stuff. I think it's it's more useful for me to know, particularly if it's like I've stopped in a shop. But what you know, the bit I'll compromise with you on is if I'm running a Centurion event like the Thames Path Hundred, like we did, yeah. I don't pause it when I'm at an aid station. No, because I need no. to know the elapsed time. But you, I can't be doing the maths when I've been up for 24 hours. Well, then you got the um, you, you got the problem time. with the auto pauses. Then, haven't you? Let's talk about no. The auto- I don't have auto. I don't have auto pause engaged. On yeah, watch. don't get it. No, I don't no, get no. it. I just don't get it. I mean, I don't know why anyone would do that unless they live in a very suburban area and have to cross a lot of roads with traffic lights. There's no point. Well, I mean, like sometimes you know, if I'm if I'm trying for a time or a speed, and mm-hmm. I'm cro- I want to cross the road, but then there's traffic. Do I pause that or do I le- let it? Go on. You plan a better route, Sunshine. Yeah, because we really are talking precious seconds. Yeah, no, no, in that sense, yes. But um, like when, when it's actually, what I mean is when it's a meaningful thing where I need to know the time for like important reasons or it's an actual event. I know they're quite exotic these days, but um, <laughs> I need to know what the elapsed time is and it's really important. So sod it. And also it gives me the aid station discipline to be in and out within a minute or whatever I need to do. Whereas, you know, when we're at those... I mean, you don't know necessarily, but when I am at like, you know, our mates at SVN or Phoenix or Saturn or whatever, I will pee about and I don't care if I'm there for five minutes. I will just flick the watch like onto pause because I'm going to stand there and have a literal chat for someone for 10 minutes. No, I know no, 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 that, that, no, 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 that, that's not right. Now you're no. cross. Yeah, because they're not racist to me, Si. Yeah, but they are because you're going to get a time at the end of that, right? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> and your Strava time is going to be 10 minutes out of your race time. At least, yeah. Right, which one's, hour, which, which one's the official time? The one that's on the website. Yeah. That's the one that goes in the spreadsheet, buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but who, yeah, but I, I don't know who gets hung up on this. You're obviously deeply hung up on it. I do. And here's, here's, some of my here, runs? here's another one I don't <laughs> understand. Here's another one I don't understand. When you do, like, okay. anything over, I don't know, it, it throws a wobbler. So, like, I will say, you know, I've, I've done a five-hour stint or whatever. And I've got a Garmin, so I'll upload to Garmin, and then somehow the magic happens, and that goes to Strava, and then Strava tells me that I've only been out for five hours and 45 minutes, which is a complete load of shit, because I haven't, and you have to manually go in there and fidget around for it to pick up that you've actually done five hours on the dot. What's that about? Uh that's never happened to me. What's happened to me is because I live in a, well, I don't know, my road seems to be like a nexus of having no signal. So my watch quite often kicks off just before I start running or it doesn't record it. Then later on when I upload it, it adds three or 400 metres to my time and like counts, no, sorry, to so my distance and counts no time for it. Is it yeah, it guesstimates. Yeah. And what, well, what's what it done to mine that? then? Because I was definitely out for five hours. I, I don't have a bloody clue what's happened to you. You probably secretly paused it and not remembered. Um, but what happens is so it registers for me, and this is stupid, it registers my first mile as being like four minutes, and then it pumps all the time into the later um, the later kilometres. Mm. And it's like, what on earth is that? Because I've run a, apparently I've run a sub-four-minute mile, eat your heart out, Bannister, and then I've run a bunch of like 14-minute miles. Roger Bannister, Simon. Okay. You heard of him? No. Oh my God, you're not sensei for me. I don't know who Roger Bannister is. <laughs> oh, maybe I have. Maybe I have. He, 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 lo- he loved the Siggy. Have you ever watched Chariots of Fire, mate? You've been watching a lot of movies recently. I haven't. I just watch him and I stare. Yeah. I stare. Oh, I stare through that? the TV. I stare through the TV. I can't concentrate. It's hilarious. I can't concentrate on anything. Like, literally, right, okay. a year ago, right, I would never turn on a telly. I, would never t- I wouldn't even turn on TV, right? I'd be perfectly happy with uh, what the normal channels, whatever, one to five. But But since this lockdown shit, I've I've just been like, I need need data and information, you know, to look at. (laughs) And, uh, but, but having that and paying for it as well. I pay for a Sky subscription. I don't watch half of the shit. I'm just like, oh my God. Dogs with interesting jobs. Dogs with jobs. No, tonight, we did. Mate. We did. Jo- we did dogs with jobs last year, didn't we? Lockdown one. Dogs with jobs. You did dogs with jobs. I didn't watch it. I, didn't, I couldn't oh, believe I it. I, I can't believe that people are watching dogs with, as if it's not insulting enough. When Arthur ain't got jobs, they've got dogs with jobs, <laughs> <laughs> and they're interesting apparently. 
Oh. My job pays the bills. That dog's they can make, interesting Rob, job. they can make a TV show out of animals with four legs that have jobs. But they don't <laughs> want to make they don't want to make one out of me counting pencils at some building site. What? <laughs> 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 no, I, I I live that little sitcom. I just I just don't think the the general public who listen to this would be able to accept. Well, we'll come back to Roger Bannister because that is unacceptable. But that you didn't watch like Hollyoaks or Corry Street or I don't know. No, any no, thing. no, like, no. People do no. And I know you've got kids, so you must have watched the little cartoons with them and stuff. Oh, that's yeah? all we do. Well, no? to be fair, okay, so that that gets turned on, and I'm just staring at it. So I don't think I've ever watched a single episode from start to finish. I know all the characters out of all of them, but, um, you know, <laughs> Paw Patrol, PJ Masks. Um, I think it's time Butter, for a quiz. Butterbean's <laughs> Cafe. Trust me, I know all the trivia and all this crap, but I've I've never watched a single episode. And they've started getting into YouTube. I say starting, they've been on YouTube for about a year. A year. And um, yeah, yeah. YouTube's horrific. You think as a parent, you're like, oh, my God, I'm letting them watch YouTube. And, oh, yeah. yeah. That's a rabbit hole, isn't it? But, they're, but then you talk to other parents, and actually, they're all, what, they're all at it. They're all at it. Oh, yeah. But it's bollocks. No, it's, literally, it's literally normal people playing with toys, and the parents <laughs> are recording this and putting it on YouTube. And you're like, what are you doing? What, what are you watching, boys? Oh, just some mum playing with her kids. What you should be doing, basically, Daddy, rather than yeah. chucking us in front of YouTube. <laughs> Too funny. Anyway, just just for trivia's sake, Simon, Roger Bannister is the first man ever to run a four a sub four minute mile. So you should absolutely love him. You should have a poster on your wall of that guy. Well done, Robert Bannister. He lo- he loved a ciggy too, did Rog? Oh Christ! See, it's a secret. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, that that that. That Strava chat, I mean, oh, come on. Let's let's go into some of our real running. We talked about events. So well, we, we we hopeful now that you're going to finally finish your little Grand Slam for Centurion. The little Grand Slam? What, as opposed to your career slam, whatever the hell that is? Yeah, on my very lengthy career slam. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'll that, give you a question. Um, yeah, let's hope so. So I'm basically putting all my eggs. Well, I'm not. I'll do a few more events. But South Downs Way 100 to me this year come on come on the june it's before it's before the absolute you know tier whatever it is you know prohibition ends june. yeah yeah so it's it's what is it like 13th of june or something i don't know the exact well, and if, that'll be yeah it's like it's like mid-june but obviously like the great unlocking is like due to be the 21st yeah you, you know that that should be able, given we were able to do covid secure stuff when we were yeah. this should be on it like should be def- it should be definitely on like donkey kong and for me i'm wrapping myself in cotton wool before it. so you're only doing like three marathons the weekend before then probably but i i, I, I don't <laughs> want to do i don't want to do anything I can't in... wait until you sign up to them i don't i, I don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't want to do i don't want to do anything insane i do not want to i do not want any self-inflicted damage because I want to do this right first time and just done. I'm so I was so disappointed when it got postponed from last year, because I thought how amazing to do the COVID Grand Slam, because that was just oh, that I, was just so, literally I'm, ridiculous. I'm sorry, a mean part of me was so happy because you would never ever ever have stopped talking about it. If it isn't bad enough, you take the piss out of me only earning all the buck. Career <laughs> Slam, Career <laughs> Slam. <laughs> If you make light of it, like it's an absolute joke or something. <laughs> it's so hard. Some people work their yeah, whole but I know. Running, like, I know, but this, this is this is what I'm talking about, Rob. This is what I'm talking about. To have the Corona Slam all in the space of, what, three well, months? you don't now, do you? It's one of the longest Grand Slams ever, so you've got to do it again, Buttons. Oh, well, it's not the, it's not the longest, <laughs> though, is it? But, uh, yeah. It's not the shorts anymore. Is it not? Next. Wow, I wow. Well, who, I'm going to find out. Who knows? Because I think, you know, if, even to do it all in one go right first time, that, that's a massive achievement, right? Surely. Of course it is. Yeah, that's something people who are very, very good at running, better than me, spend like almost a decade sometimes chasing after. Yeah, so literally, all, you, so whoever whoever it is at the 50 or 60 or 70 mile A station who sees me crawling in, they're going to have to rip my race number off me because I'm not quitting. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I, oh. Make it so dramatic, like you're actually going to run out of time. You're able to have like a five hour nap in the middle of this and still finish. Well, I have with all the other three, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is, it makes a joke of it. I'm not making Stop a it. joke of it. I'm not making a joke. No, but you are passively and accidentally making a joke out of something that's really hard. No, yeah, no, Sitting seriously. Down on a blanket eating a sandwich. North, what are you da- doing? North, da- North Downs Way and Thames Path 100, I found really hard. Really, really hard. Something went right <laughs> at autumn, and I, I cannot wait. I really hope I'm fit enough at South Downs Way. I just finish it. Christ's sake. And so if you, if, if, um, you're down for South Downs Way next year? Yes, yeah, deferred, same as you. So, um, yeah, yeah should, be, should be there with you. Not with you, obviously, because you'll be absolutely miles ahead. But I might ca- I might actually, fun fact, might be, <laughs> given how the Thames Path went, I might be fit enough that if you do bomb out, I might find you in a ditch. Yeah, maybe. And, and <laughs> then enough time to spare. And then, so if, <laughs> if that one gets completed, mm. what do you have left? to complete so i have autumn. to do the autumn 100 to get the full set to yeah get your and career then, slam and then yeah and then in the future um i'll go back and try and do the four in sequence but to be honest i that that would have been a thing but it's it, I, you know it's not i'm not obsessed by it it would have been but nice we were though Rob, weren't we like last year we were so obsessed by it and obsessed I, by the idea of it but, yeah. but i was Glad, I was really glad because I because in 2017 we've told the story before, but like brief recap, I I went up for the slam because I'd done in 2016 I'd done what everyone sees the North Downs Way hundred as the hardest one. And Agreed. Somebody taught me Agreed. Slam. Yeah, and someone taught me to do the slam, and I I went up for it, did the Thames Path, got absolutely embarrassed by the Thames Path hundred, and junk uh, and attempted the South Downs Way, got injured, junked it, all gone in the bin. Uh, volunteered instead and then obviously I was like this time round just because I didn't succeed on the North Downs way I was so happy that I went and turned up to the others gave them a go and obviously Thames Path that was literally the best the best ultra I've ever done so um, hopefully South Downs could not be notched I know you didn't like it but that's 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 a that makes me even happier that I enjoyed it Mm. yeah no South (laughs) South Downs should be good because we were in a position where it was going to be a really dark, wet, windy November race. Yeah, and that's going to be a summer's day, so there'll be champagne can, can, at the end. Yeah, can you imagine that, though? Can you imagine doing the South Downs Way in the middle of November where any any little inkling of wind would just kill you? I there? was ready for it because we, we've been, so, you know, we've been summered in Samphire Ho with 10-hour non-stop yeah, 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 pouring yeah. rain. But the, the wind there is just next level. But, mate, that, so. but that race went from the easiest, easiest hundred in that in that slam to the hardest overnight when they changed it to November. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 don't, just, I don't care what anyone says. It's, it's the easiest, but yeah, it's definitely one of the more accessible ones. Mainly because don't tell James it's ninety nine miles, but yeah, it'd be, it just make me laugh if you have to turn up with a hurty because you've tried to do like a ten in ten the week before. Oh, James, I've got an ingrown toenail. Is a note from my mum. Can I still have the slam, please? Please, because that means I get an extra buckle, right? Yeah, you get a really big unwearable buckle. But I, I know just now I'm gonna have to stop coming around your house even when I'm allowed to because it'll just be sat on that bloody table and I have to stare at it. And get told the story of the Corona Slam. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not bitter, obviously. I'm not bitter at all. That's going to be not letting you. That's going to be. I'm not letting book. you have more buckles with me. It's going to be. I'm not letting book. you have more buckles with me. Oh, shame. I won't. I won't. I won't allow that to happen. You can have more marathons. You're not having more buckles. I'll have both. This is the. <laughs> oh, he's fighting talk now. You wait, mate. If you do that to me, I'll get so skinny. I'll be running sub freeze for an absolute laugh after you. And you'll have to outrun me. <laughs> then you'll need a note from your mum, mate. <laughs> oh. Belly's going to get you. Um, so that's good. Yeah, that'll be a little reunion. Have you got anything before that besides your sort of 20 marathons you're going to do? Um, don't think so, to be honest. Uh, so I'm doing the Viking 100, so I'll already be a buckle up on you when we start the South Downs 100 if I can get that finished. Oh, okay, if you finish it, yeah. <laughs> if is it is it that's the thing though joking aside it's always an if oh, it i is. know you're obviously no, it's the same with me so, rob no, no, it's the same with me same yeah it's always an if. i've yeah. technically i've technically only i finished four of 700s i started mm. granted i haven't been in the right condition for most of them um drinking at a bus stop for example isn't like the best you know preparations for 100 miler is it but um 
but um yeah so but but even when i've actually been up for it it's it's not trivial finishing it yeah. even for someone experienced like um like we sort of are but yeah. we'll oh, see i can't see, wait friend. i just can't wait well, that, this needs to happen, it needs to happen now man you know, let us have a nice little pit when you've got your t-shirt we'll have a nice little picnic for you to celebrate little champagners it just needs to happen you now know. it needs to happen right now i just want it now but it's yeah right, still right more now. waiting in there still more waiting people Still more waiting. Yeah, a little, bit, little bit more waiting, but come on, like uh, all the stupid analogies over the side. At least we have a bit of certainty now. Um, like you know which month you're going to be doing the thing we really, really love doing and talking about doing here. So yeah, if if, if, shit, if shit goes down well, yeah, yeah, and we, yeah. but it's a, something to look forward to. It is, Rob. It really is. I mean, I'm not obsessed by it, to be honest, given how things are going for me personally. I, I know this isn't... Well, you're winning. You're, you're winning. You're winning at the moment in lockdown, I, aren't you? I, I'm, no, I'm using the what we're going to call the downtime to try and be ready for when stuff happens in the uptime. And OK, we've had a year of struggles through this, but now we've finally got a bit of a winning formula and I'll be in some sort of shape to not be puffing my way around all the time because it's it's just horrible that it's so hard Sai. again i know you have a different type of difficulty when you're running hard but it's so it's so you wouldn't understand it's so stressful having yeah, to outrun it, I, cut off I, I don't think you understand like it is so stressful and it hurts like hell and you want to stop every 30 seconds you want to stop but you can I, be you can't stop your yeah but i know i don't stop Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe it's the same thing. If you stop, yeah. then there's cutoffs to think about. It's it's it's, it's the same, but it's totally different. But if, if I if I stop, there's there's an ambulance to think about. I don't know. No, it, no. If you stop, then there's a Paul Gold or a Lee Rogers or something to think about because yeah, yeah, for yeah. whatever reason, and, and I just don't get it because I just don't have access to it. The only person I'm racing is me. You're racing other people, and I just I'll never understand why. Particularly when it's not actually a, a technically a competition, but it's your bag. You like doing it. I have to race. I have to race though, Simon, so I can get an official marathon, for example, or an ultra, or finish a race within the allowed time before they cl- close the aid station. That is an ultimate thing. It just I, makes I, it. I it, just, it, just, it just makes what we do such a different beast to each other. It's just mental. Yeah, and but, like, he, like, I, I, while I don't understand it, I, I totally admire and respect what you do. Like, you, you know, I do. Yeah, so so it's, it's like, yeah, no, but it's, it's, it's same. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, but yeah. I'll never, um, unless, and, and I will, and I will. It's one of my things on my little list. You see my little list on the wall, haven't you? We'll get a little update on that in a couple of days. Okay. But um, what you got a boxing I've, ring? I've, have you got a boxing ring? I, no, no, no. I've added your suggestion though, so I have to teach myself to walk again after you break my legs. <laughs> I don't know how you're breaking my legs in boxing, but there you go. No, but um, I've I've now decided. Now I've done like my first um, good 5k time in four, literally four years. So it's taken me to get under 30 minutes for 5k, and like that would be a joke time to you, but you can probably see how big that is for me. And now I've decided that with your tutelage, Sensei, I'm going to push on and um, try and tick off a marathon PB sometime this year. Don't know when. No, no rush. But well, I think, when it, I think it's definitely a good target. Definitely a good target. Give me, give me, a, give me a few more months, and I reckon in the summer, sometime when the the, the going's good, we can do that, and then I can finally maybe have a prosecco again or something. It's wow. been too long. Sobes, sobes till the summer. I'm um, no, 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 no. That's that's not a thing. But you know what I mean. I'm sort of joking. But I have, I am, I am fifty six days sobes at this point. No, it, no, alcohol, it's very impressive. Days. It's very impressive. It's this. This is a modern day record for me. I haven't, haven't been, haven't been able to do that for like ten years. I mean, I haven't really tried, but I, I've never been like nothing. Are you trying? I, do, does it real? What is what is anymore. that like? Trying. I mean, do... it, it's not trying anymore. In fact, the idea of it sort of scares and slightly disgusts me. Like the the smell of red wine makes me feel a bit queasy now. Oh, I've keep forgotten. that going then. Keep Let, going. Get this side. This is weird. Get this, though. I, I'm sort of curious about what it's like to be drunk because I've forgotten what it feels like. Mm. Now, you can maybe tell me what it feels like because I can say, I, I can hear you drinking out of a tin. No, I'm drinking out of a glass. Um, oh, shit, that's me drinking out of a tin. Yeah. What's it like? Coca-Cola. Well, it's, it's made this go a lot quicker. 
Oh yeah, well you, you have to drink through me. That's what I'm hearing there. The coping. Um, but no, it's the, the best thing I've forgotten is what it's like to be hung over, and that's what scares me. I don't. Uh, that I mean, first that's hangover. great, mate. Can you, 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 can you even that. imagine the first hangover after two months? Yeah, you don't need that. You don't. Oh, you do not need. That. No. Yeah. No, st- stuff's too weird at the moment, man. I want. You know, I'm romanticising, almost fantasise about like being out with I don't know, running mum, running dad, little sigh. We we've just run a marathon or something together, and we just stop for some bands and some salpignon on the bench outside the weir or something. Wouldn't that just be brilliant on a summer well, yeah, evening? Yeah, it could be even better. Like you could get a meal inside somewhere. <laughs> I don't care about the food. I just want some salpignon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, you know, it's, it'd just be nice to um to because it isn't just about going back to do. Like, yes, I want to go back and do marathons and ultras, but I want to go back and I want to hang out with people. I want to see my friends. I want to talk to people. And I've been absolutely so lucky to have a couple of the guys who live near me running around a couple of times a week with me, putting up with me. But God, it'd be so good just to see that big cluster of like 20, 30 people who are so different, but so the same as I am and just have some bants. Can't wait, man. Can't bants. wait. <laughs> Yeah, throw some bants around. It will be brilliant. Are you not looking forward to that? I know you don't really talk to people when you run, but you do before you start, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the start is my that's favorite gotta bit. Be, that's got to be a drawback, hasn't it? It's yeah. got to be something you're excited about. Yeah, well, I can't wait, man. Mm. It's going to be good. It's going to well, be a good stuff. On that, Rob, I'll, I'll, I'll go let you dream about that then for another two yeah, months. Yeah, I'm going to go fantasize about that and yeah. not be allowed any Sauvignon, and you're probably going to go and have some Sauvignon, aren't you? Maybe. Cabernet. All right, buddy. Yeah. It's been good catching up, and it'll yeah. be good to see everyone out there. We get a chance, yeah. Good to speak, bud. You, you keep Essex going well, mate. You look after Surrey, yeah. boy. I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you in about another month. Bye. <laughs> Bye.